It's like the sweetest intro I've ever gotten. It's pretty cool. Ooh, can we bring that down just a little bit? All right. Okay, um, so you guys having a good day at the conference so far? Yeah, getting pumped, or do we need a little more caffeine in here? Um, so who's heard of Jewelbots before? Anybody? Okay, who's actually gotten to play with Jewelbots before? Anybody? Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, I love getting to talk about these to people who've never heard of them because they're one of my favorite things. <clears throat> Uh, so before I get started, I do want to say thanks to all our sponsors. Obviously, this is a pretty stellar conference, um, and so much work goes into this. So say thank you to the, to the sponsors for keeping the ticket prices low. Say thank you to the staff. They've made this a really ex amazing experience for speakers and everything like that. Um, so just make sure to say thank you for everybody for putting on such an amazing conference. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, this is my Twitter handle, like Omji It's Fetty. Um, I will tweet my slides out, so all the information will be there. Um, be warned, I love trashy reality television, and Monday night I live tweet The Bachelor. It's this trashy American reality TV show, so you have been warned. Um, I'm a JavaScript developer. I work at a teeny tiny um, tech startup in Kansas City developing apps for lawyers. Um, not super interesting, but I get to write Angular, so that makes me happy. Um, I'm a community organizer. I'll go a little more into that because that kind of uh, builds to the context of this talk um, and a lot of where my experience comes from. Huge diversity advocate. I have a vagina, uh, clearly, so I'm more excited about getting more women and girls in tech. <clears throat> and I am a self-taught engineer, um, so really big advocate of making sure that everybody knows the different pathways into technology and there's not just one certain way of a four-year computer science degree to be successful in this industry. <clears throat> so a little bit about some of the work that I've done. Uh, five years ago, I launched a nonprofit called Kansas City Women in Technology. I was the, one of the very few women developers working at a big uh, digital marketing agency, and the guys I worked with were fantastic, but there was something missing that there weren't more people for me to relate to. And so I set out to try and figure out how do I solve this problem? How do I get more, meet more women in technology? Um, and so we had this big launch party, like 300 people showed up, and I don't think I met a single other woman technologist there. There were a shit ton of women wanting to get into technology. There were educators wanting to figure out how to get girls interested in technology or bring code to the classrooms. And so that really shaped the trajectory of my organization. Um, has anybody heard of Coder Dojo? Yeah? Cool. Okay, so we have a Kansas City chapter we've been running since 2013. That was one of the first things we launched. Um, our Coder Dojo is for all kiddos, 7 through 17, boys and girls, regardless of whatever your gender identity is. Uh, we want to create this idea of gender blindness, that it's not weird to be a boy or a girl or however you identify. Coding is for everyone. Coding is a blast, and so we really do a lot about positive exposure. Um, yes, there's coding involved, but we do focus a lot on soft skills, presentation, collaboration, um, and peer mentoring. <clears throat> So something really interesting happened when we were promoting our, our Coder Dojo program at school nights, um, where like programmer dads would see our booth and they'd come up and they'd be like, oh my god, how, I, how do I sign my daughter up? This is amazing, I, I can't believe you guys are doing this. But a lot of times we'd be approached by parents that would see that we're a coding club and they'd be like, um, well, I don't think my daughter would like that, but maybe I'll bring my son. And so it's like, shit, like we've got parents here who are already predispositioning their daughters against coding, um, so how do we fix that? Uh, we brand it, we turn it pink, we market it, and we make it super girly, and we call it Coding in Cupcakes. Um, and so this is a program that uh, we actually started implementing our Jewelbots curriculum in uh, this year. Um, but it's pink, which I know some people have an issue with, but uh, the code underneath is the same. I've got 11-year-old girls deploying their websites to GitHub, so I don't really care what the color is because the girls are excited about technology, and that's the goal at the end of the day. <clears throat> Uh, when we launched Coding in Cupcakes, we were all about getting little girls excited, but one of the uh, things we had happen were a, a bunch of women would sign up for our program and they'd email us and they'd be like, well, I don't have a daughter, but can I come to your coding class anyway? Uh, and so we ended up launching Coding in Cocktails, which is our adult series for women. Um, we focus on front-end development, um, Currently working on Angular, we talk about uh, how to use command line, how to use version control, preferably GitHub, um, all sorts of skills that women need to start to um, launch career paths into uh, becoming front-end web developers. We run a Django Girls workshop every year. Anybody familiar with Django Girls? Yeah, okay. Um, so Django is a Python framework, which is actually, uh, Django is founded out of Lawrence, Kansas, which is about 45 minutes from where I live in the state, so that's pretty cool. Um, but they have this really amazing curriculum they've built and really great branding, so if you're ever interested in figuring out how you can do more diversity work in your city, Django Girls is this amazing bootstrap program that you can very easily, easily implement. So all these things are very bootstrappable um, for you to launch in your own cities and make uh, diversity efforts happen. <clears throat> 
Okay, so why are we here today? What inspired this talk? Uh, going to developer conferences, talking about women in tech, this is the question I always get. Right? Like, nobody's figured out how to do this. Um, and so I answer the same question a million times, and finally I'm like, screw it, I'm just gonna make a talk about it, and I'll never get asked this question again. Just kidding, I get asked it all the time. But, um, so to kind of understand what's going on with why we aren't seeing more women in technology, why we aren't seeing more girls coding, we kind of have to look at the environment of what's happening and what's causing this. Why aren't girls getting into coding? Uh, let's talk about psychological barriers, things that are happening uh, with their understanding of society and what we are doing as a society to create these um, ideas that they might have. Lack of encouragement and role models, gender-based marketing is a killer, um, and the fact that tech isn't made for girls. Uh, <clears throat> and then, of course, we have general societal pressures about how we as women are expected to behave and all the different ways that that plays in. Uh, so... <laughs> One of the issues uh, that we see right now with, with kids particularly is they are a very consumer-based generation. Um, is anybody familiar with anything up here? Yeah, yeah, okay, some of, my, some of my 90s kids. So this was my entrance into web development, right? We had this very, like, ugly internet. Um, I don't know if anybody went to the Space Jam talk, but, you know, that was kind of the age we grew up in. And so there was this really organic way to go in and start creating content, making your own things, and, and using code to make the web a place that you wanted it to be. And so, you know, I had my, my MySpace page with, like, the glittering falling stars and, like, the track embedded and, uh, you know, all those, like, painful, like, gifts with the girls with the anime eyes and they're sparkling and, oh, why doesn't this guy like me? I'm going to leave my cryptic messages. Um, I had my Zanga page where I would, like, always be updating my background because I was bored in class. And who did not love Neopets? Neopets were amazing. And it still exists, by the way. Um, but the whole point is... Uh, there was so many uh, different pathways and organic ways to get into coding where it wasn't like, oh, you're writing code. It's, no, I'm being creative. I'm customizing this to meet my needs. And we don't have that today for kids. They've got these perfect iPads, right, that there's no way to, to change. They've got Instagram. They've got Snapchat. They've got Facebook, all these things that are just used to serve content, but there's no creation inside of there. And so we're faced with a really new issue that we didn't have years and years ago where there's not that intrinsic motivator of why should kids create when they can so readily consume something that's amazing. <clears throat> so let's talk about some of the other concepts and issues that we've run into. Um, there was a study done on bright girls um, and bright boys. So they took 10-year-olds, um, high IQs. And something really interesting happened with the study where uh, the 10-year-old boys, the more challenging the curriculum was, the more quickly they took to it, the more aggressively they tried to accomplish it versus the girls. The higher the girl's IQ was, the more quickly she dropped challenging material. So, so what's going on here? Does anybody have any ideas on what might, what might be going on? Audience participation is okay. Um, <clears throat> so what they kind of started to realize, or let's think about the way we talk to boys and girls. Uh, when girls are in school, they tend to mature faster and kind of are able to stay on track and, and do well in school versus boys might be a little more rowdy, a little more rambunctious. And so the boys are told, hey, hey, pay attention. Hey, if you, if you pay attention, if you work, if you focus, you can get this done. And the girls are being told, oh, good job. Oh, you did such a good job. You're so smart. And so the message we're getting out of that is that girls are thinking that intelligence is innate. It's a trait that they are praised for. And boys are being given the message that if they work hard, they can do whatever. And so this is something that very much played out in my life. I was incredibly intelligent in school, um, over a 4.0 GPA, uh, which is kind of high-level performing in the States. I was in Honor Society. I was in National Honor Society, Spanish National Honor Society. I was a high performer. And then I get to university and I'm flunking my econ class, macroeconomics, and I'm in tears in my professor's office crying, and I'm crying on the phone to my mom at, at, at home because clearly I'm too stupid to be in college. I don't deserve to be here. And I had never, ever, ever been challenged in my life. So I just thought, nope, that's my, that's my smart cap, right? I'm not smart enough to figure this out. And once I read this article, it changed my life. And especially because I read it, you know, several years into my programming career that all of a sudden it wasn't, oh, I'm just not smart enough to figure out this concept. It's, oh, no, I just need to get my shit together and work harder and I will get there. Um, and so this is really important to understand when we think about the way we talk to girls and the way we praise them. So we want to praise efforts. We want to praise um, progress and trying and struggling and figuring out challenges. 
Uh, one of the things we do at our Coder Dojo chapter is when we have the kiddos come up stage and present their projects, we ask them, what was the hardest thing you had to figure out in this project? Because we want them to think, okay, what is this big challenge and how did I overcome it? Because that's what we need to focus on for the engineers of tomorrow, right? Are the people who are going to take those boundaries and take those challenges and make whatever they want to have happen, happen. Um, so these are really important things to think about when, when we're trying to figure out how to solve this diversity in tech problem. <clears throat> uh, role models. Do you guys have Silicon Valley out here? Any, okay, a couple. Um, it, show on HBO, uh, and this is uh, Richard, who's the CEO of his company, and right here he's having a shit fit over somebody using tabs versus spaces. Um, and this is the kind of role model we see in, in technology and representatives, right? And a little girl isn't going to look at this and be like, oh, I want to be like Richard. No. So it's a really big problem when we're putting out this very stereotypic image, which, yes, may be fairly relative, but it's not something that a young woman is going to want to aspire to be like. <clears throat> We also have this issue that tech isn't made for girls. Um, is anybody a pebbler? Pebble watch? Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you still sad that they went out of business? I cried that Friday morning, it was bad. <laughs> um, so anyway, a couple years ago, they launched new colors, and they had the sky blue, lime green, and pink. And people were having a problem with the fact that they launched a pink color, because heaven fucking forbid somebody made a technology product for girls. Um, and so there were some unpleasant Reddit comments, and so we're definitely reinforcing this idea that, oh no, women don't deserve to be in tech. They don't deserve tech products. <clears throat> and the, the other part is, when it comes to technology, and this leads back to role models, women and girls are scrutinized so much more than men, and it may not be something you realize, but this plays into our psyche, this plays into the decisions we make and the paths we choose to pursue, is how we are going to be judged and perceived by society. And so this is something, again, really key to understanding why we aren't seeing more girls in technology. <clears throat> uh, I'm a very pragmatic person. I would love to see the world be a perfect place, but that is not going to happen today. That is not going to happen tomorrow. That may not happen in my lifetime. Uh, we're not going to change society in one day overnight. And so in the meantime, we need to equip girls and people uh, with the tools to succeed in, in the state we are in today. <clears throat> all right, so let's talk about how to counter all these. Exposure to opportunities. That's why we're here, to learn about Jewelbot. So I'm so excited. This is all leading up to why these are so amazing. Um, positive reinforcement, talking about encouraging hard work and perseverance. We want to broadcast the message of not that they're smart, but they, are, they can accomplish anything regardless of how challenging it is. <clears throat> uh, we can expose girls to more female role models. Uh, and again, when we talk about being scrutinized by the way we look and what we do and what we wear, um, having a wardrobe that reflects who a young woman is uh, can really go a long way. Um, so has anybody heard of Simone Yurtz? Yeah? Okay, a couple hands, yep. Uh, her title, as she has given herself, the queen of shitty robots. Um, if you need a more age-appropriate one, queen of wonder wonderfully craptastic machines. Um, <clears throat> But the thing I love about her is the fact that she builds crappy robots. It's so endearing, but it's also very attainable, right? Because if you look at somebody like, let's say, working on a rocket launch, that's a big, massive problem to solve with a million things that can go wrong, right? Oh, there's no way I could be smart enough to do that. But could I build a shitty robot? Hell yeah, I could build a shitty robot. Um, so I really love the fact that she uh, has this, such an endearing way of, of getting girls excited and engaged in tech. Um, unfortunately, she has recently been diagnosed with um, cancer, so send her your well wishes. Um, she's kind of a badass and needs all of our support. Uh, there are finally starting to be girl shirts. I remember being, what, middle school, so I was probably like 11, 12, super excited for Phantom Menace to come out, but there were no Star Wars t-shirts in the girls section. I had to go to the boys section to get a damn Star Wars t-shirt to wear to show my nerd fandom. And so it's really amazing that people have started to finally pay attention and say, okay, we need to stop like just giving girls things that say, pretty, pretty princess, or I'm too dumb to do math, and really start to give girls something to wear to reflect their identity in a strong and powerful way. Um, so these are a couple examples. Um, these are from a couple chains in the United States. Uh, Old Navy has done a lot of really awesome graphic tees. And then Crossing Arrows is actually a company native to Kansas City, um, founded by a woman whose daughter didn't see the kind of clothes she wanted to wear in the girls' section, and so her mom set out to create a clothing line that really reflected her daughter's ideals. <clears throat> all right, so let's finally talk about what Jewelbots are and why they are such an awesome solution to all these problems we're facing. Um, they are friendship 
uh, powered bracelets that are Bluetooth. So um, you can kind of see them here, and I'll have a camera for you guys. I've made my own uh, custom wristbands because I'm a bougie, bougie bitch like that. Uh, but here's what they come with. They come with an orange strap and a gray strap. Um, <clears throat> So cool thing about these is they're very social. And in girls at this age, um, when we're talking like the 8 to 16, socializing is one of the primary ways that they've, they've been taught by society of what they need to focus on. And so by having something that's meant to be known with friends automatically kind of gets rid of that idea that coding is only done in a dark room, in a basement, when you got like your Mountain Dew on one side and like your Cheeto fingers on the other. You know, that's not the kind of image we want to send. <clears throat> Uh, so these were created by Sarah Chips, who you may have heard of. She's the co-founder of Girl Develop It, which is a program that is, again, trying to get more women into code, um, and Brooke Orlin. And these two ladies are amazing. Um, if Jewelbots are a product that you're interested in getting involved or starting to use, these women are so supportive. They're amazing. They'll answer all your emails immediately. They've done a really good job creating a great community and a forum. Cannot say enough great things about them. Okay. Uh, so these are actually programmed via the Arduino IDE, which makes it really easy because um, there's a lot of really pre-existing resources, um, good forum support, so if you run into any issues, that's nice. Um, use the C++, and they are open source. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but the fact that um, when I mentioned earlier we were talking about the consumerism versus uh, the creation society, when you have an open source project and girls start to run into barriers or they want the Jewelbot to do something extra, you've got a really easy lead in there to say, hey, okay, let's go look at the source code. Hey, let's go make this do the thing you do. They get to build and support the community and they get to empower themselves to, to build this product to make it what they want. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna walk you guys through what setup looks like. Um, and everything that you need for a Jewelbot is gonna come in the package with you. So you're gonna have your Jewelbot bracelet that comes with a micro USB, um, of course, I've got like a million of these laying around my house, so you can use anything, but it does come packaged for you. Um, you do need a computer, and it has to be a computer where you have admin credentials to download the software. Um, we have to install custom boards, so there is a web ID version of uh, Arduino, but that does not currently support um, <clears throat> downloading your custom boards. So you need a computer that you can have download permissions to, preferably with Wi-Fi access if you're going to be running in a workshop. We had a kid at Coder Dojo one time bring in like one of those like big old brick computers and they're like, well, where do you plug in the, the, the Ethernet cable? And we're like, oh my God, this computer doesn't have Wi-Fi. How does that still happen? So uh, things to be aware of. <clears throat> uh, you can download the Arduino IDE online and we'll kind of walk through that. Uh, so all this information is available on the Jewelbots website, but um, for copy and paste references, it's available here easily. Uh, so if you have never seen uh, the Arduino interface before, this is what it looks like. And so when we talk about going into our preferences um, on a Mac, this is how it's going to look in here. <clears throat> okay, and this is kind of difficult to see here because um, I can't zoom in on this part, um, but where it says that additional boards manager URL, that's where you're going to copy and paste your boards in and then restart your IDE to get those active. Okay. Um, so we restart our IDE, so we've got our boards ready to go. Uh, and then the next thing we have to do is we have to go and actually find our boards. Mine are already installed here, but I'm going to at least show you guys what it'll look like. Uh, so we can go to our tools, our boards, our board manager. <clears throat> and so you've got this handy little search bar where it's going to allow you to uh, search for your installed boards and then um, click. And when they're brand new, there will be um, the install button active. Um, whenever there's a new firmware update, like there has been one within the past two months that unleashed some really cool new colors, um, this is how you do that, is you'd go and select your firmware board, you'd get the latest one, and you'd install that. <clears throat> boop, 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 boop. Okay. All right. So let's talk about kind of uh, the base functionality that Jewelbots come with. Um, the first thing to do is make sure that your firmware is updated, and you can do that by going into the firmware board and uploading a blank sketch to your Jewelbot, which I'll demo in a minute. Um, and so if, if, if for some reason maybe you like get an old Jewelbot that was like sitting in the back of a factory and were like several firmware updates since that product was released, this is how you'll fix any wonkiness that happens there. Okay, um, so I've never been to Vienna before, and Jewelbots are best with friends, so I'm going to need two friends to come help me. Okay, I've got a friend there and a friend there. <laughs> Come on up. This is the interactive portion of the session. <laughs> okay. All right, so you ladies can go ahead and um, strap your jewel bots on. And I'm going to put the instructions up here for you. Um, 
Nope. <laughs> These are my demo jewel bots. Okay, um, so while they're getting theirs on, um, this is how you're gonna pair your Joolbot, is you're gonna turn it on. Um, there is one button in the, in the middle of uh, the Joolbot, and so that's the only button you interact with, and you'll feel it like press and click down. Um, so when we talk about the magic button, that's what this refers to. Anytime we have a second count with Joolbots, we do something um, in America called one Mississippi, two Mississippi. And so like when little kids are playing hide and go seek to make sure they're not like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have implemented the Mississippi system where we go one Mississippi, two Mississippi to ensure fairness. So that's the same way we count for jewel bots when we're getting our timing down right. We're gonna go one Mississippi, two Mississippi. All right, so you ladies ready? Yep. Okay, and we can kind of have you, not that you guys will be able to see exactly what's going on, but um, so you're gonna hold your jewel bots together. Yep, um, they are supposed to be within like a two foot range for pairing mode. Okay, so um, press your magic button once to turn it on and it'll rainbow circle light and you'll see it click down. Okay, so they are on, success. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press and hold down for two Mississippi. So we're gonna go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then let go, and they should light up Cerulean. Okay, so both theirs are lit up Cerulean, which means they're in pairing mode. And what's gonna happen is one of them is gonna start circling different colors. And so you can see we've got um, these four points, the different LEDs. So you have four different friendship colors um, to choose from, you can do red, Green, blue, uh, cerulean, red, blue, green, cerulean. Yep, okay. So choose whichever friendship color you guys want to be um, by clicking when it touches that color. Okay, so they have selected to be cerulean friends. So these are going to sync up and then both light cerulean, maybe. Oh, right. actually, I think you clicked it on red. These lights are like really bright, making it hard to see the LEDs. I just slid in. Yeah, okay. right. Did yours light up red too? No. Okay, yours is red. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like, kill the lights. All right, how's it going? Oh, thank you, amazing AV people. All right, let's give it a second, because yours is definitely sync, so yours should be syncing up any second now. <laughs> okay, um, try holding yours down again and putting it into pairing mode. And then let go. Okay. Put yours, try yours into pairing mode again. Um, so while they're figuring this out, uh, this is another really cool part of the Jewelbots product is it does take a little bit to figure out, but you're inherently teaching girls how to debug without realizing they're doing it. So as we're talking through these different problem solving steps and kind of figuring out how to work, we're getting them in that mindset of debugging and not seeing an error or having something, are we, are we synced now? I guess so, yeah, well, we're sort of blinking in the same color. You're, you were blinking in the same color? Uh, no, no, it's no. gone again. What? It's gone again. <laughs> All right, um, we're, we'll do, oh, okay, yay, we have Cerulean friends, woo! Okay. Um, okay, awesome. So now they are friendship paired. You can have up to four different friendship pairings, one for each of the color, and you can have multiple friends. So if I turn mine on, like we could be red friends, or I could join you guys and be Cerulean friends, or we could be green friends and we could be red friends. So all sorts of friend combinations. All right, so when this is gonna get really cool is when you can send secret messages to each other. Whoa, right? Okay, so I'm gonna uh, put your instructions up here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press your magic button once to put it into messaging mode. And what it's gonna do is it'll start rotating all the different um, LED light colors for any friends. So if you have like a cerulean friend and a red friend in range, um, I keep saying cerulean and cyan interchangeably, it's cyan, bad head. Um, <clears throat> You click on the color of the message of the friend you want to send, so click your middle magic button. Yep, okay. And then you can hold it down for a short buzz or a long buzz, so like a one Mississippi. Let go. And then as soon as one of you guys buzzes the other one, you have to jump up and let us know. And it might take a little bit of practicing. Buzz. Yeah, so this is in messaging mode when it rotates, so if you click it once, Um, and then uh, press down for like a, a oh, did you get buzzed? No. Okay, yeah, so click once to go in me messaging mode. Mm -hmm. And then when it rotates around, click, you guys only have one friend, lame. Um, yeah, select that friend once and then um, hold it down for a long or a short buzz. So like a one Mississippi when it's in, you, I think you should be. Hmm. 
Okay. Here, we'll try one at a time. All right, click now. Lego. Because you're just going to do a short click to select your friend. All right, now do uh, one Mississippi. And let go. Okay, I'm going to have you guys practice <laughs> getting yourselves to buzz, and I don't know if you want to like stand there while I kind of go through so we can be time management. And as soon as you guys get your message to go through, you got to yell and let us know, okay? Yeah. All right, takes practice. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this is what comes with the base functionality. And when we run Joolbot's workshops, what we do is we kind of demonstrate um, the different ways to use it because it really sets the stage. Because when we talk about button clicking, we have a really easy way to explain event handling, right? I click a button, something happens. And so when we start to write the code, it's very apparent and very tangible uh, for the girls to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> so. Uh, when we talk about writing custom code for uh, the Joolbots, what we want to do, here's kind of the basic setup for controlling our lights. <laughs> um, so these are the different colors. Our original colors were just red, green, blue, magenta, yellow, and cyan. But in the recent firmware update, inspired by actual Joolbots community members, they added all these new colors to the API. So these are new colors that you can light up your Joolbot with. Um, we have the four different LED lights you can see that are marked southwest, yeah. northwest. Yeah! They messaged. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, you guys can have a seat and message each other back and forth if you want. Just bring those up to me at the end. Um, yes, okay. Actually, actually, I might have, you can just sit on the side of the stage real quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use you in a minute when we do custom code. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So to control the different lights that we're going to do, here's how we target our different coordinates with the northwest, north, uh, east, southeast, and southwest. Um, these align to uh, the micro USB, uh, which is how we're going to plug in and upload our code. So that's how you can orient to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> All right, so uh, here is our very basic LED, or, um, API is we instantiate our LED. And then here are all the different functions that we can use. The cool thing about this is, yes, it's code, but it's very readable. When we see turn on single, it's very apparent what that's going to do. And so it kind of breaks down that intimidation factor that a lot of new coders see. So if you're an experienced developer looking at your, this API, you're like, OK, that's not fucking rocket science, right? But the good thing is it's very easy. It's uh, very great to figure out, especially if you have mentors or volunteers who maybe aren't as familiar with code, and again, for girls figuring it out. <clears throat> Um, for our animations, we've got a couple of custom animations built in. We've got the rainbow that'll happen to kind of signify different things, like when we first turn the Jewelbots on. We've got the Jewelbots logo where they cycle their own colors. And then there's a breathe single color function that kind of like does a fade in and fade out. Um, I'm actually working on a pull request for this right now because the breathe only supports the original colors. Um, so it doesn't support the new ones, but that's the really cool thing about Joolbots, again, is we can go in and see, okay, how do we make this more robust? How do we build it out? How do we make it better? Very easy pathway into that. <clears throat> All right, so our buzzer, when we are sending our buzzes back and forth, uh, we go ahead and instantiate, and we've got um, very, very uh, interesting functions here. We've got an extra short buzz, a short buzz, a medium buzz, a really long buzz, and a custom buzz. Again, not rocket science, but you're really helping set the groundwork to understand how we work as programmers. And especially when you look at these different buzzes and then you see the custom buzz and you're like, oh, OK. So I can start to customize the length of the buzz and then the 500 is the intensity that it'll be at. <clears throat> Um, so when we talk about interacting in our event handling, um, we have a function called our button press. And so we've got just our basic button press. We've got our button press long. So when we're talking about our one Mississippi, two Mississippi, that's how we would engage a function there. And then we have a charging button press. Um, so that way, if you're plugged in um, to the USB and you want to be testing your code live, you can do a charging button press so you can know what happens when you press the charge button while it's plugged in. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so here are a couple just uh, helpful utility functions as you go along. Um, in our setup, if we do our set run loop charging, that's going to have our code automatically execute while it's plugged in. So again, instead of having to um, unplug and replug back in, that'll help a lot. Um, we can set our Arduino coding, which is going to allow us to do um, if-else statements and some basic um, functionality there. And then you can do some printing to the monitor if you need to kind of figure out or understand what's going on. Um, 
So we've got two different modes. We can code in solo mode, which is if we're just wanting to kind of customize on our own. And then we've got friendship coding mode, which is what's really cool that allows us to ter determine what's going to happen when we interact or, or see our friends around. Um, and so this is our friendship library. Right now, we only have the four different friendship colors. Um, and so these are just going to return a Boolean value, true or false, um, depending on whether your friend is around. Uh, so they are Bluetooth enabled, which means if you like walk 50 feet away, your jewel bots are no longer going to be um, in range of each other. So for instance, if one of them was to run to the other side of the convention center, C Cyan friends would be false because she wasn't in range. But as soon as they come back in range of each other, C Cyan friends is going to be true. <clears throat> All right, so let's do some coding. Uh, we're going to do. Uh, how much time do I have? Not a whole lot of time. Uh, we're going to do some basic functions here um, where I'm going to show you guys all the different colors that we go through. And so let me get my camera set up so you guys can see what's going on. Um, and I will show you guys what it looks like to get this code uploaded. Boop, boop, boop. My super advanced setup. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've nailed the messaging now. All right, awesome. Takes a little bit of practice. All right. Hello, that's me. Why aren't you reading my phone? Oh, God, I killed it. All right, who wants to be my super special phone holder? All right. OK. Let's try this again. Um. Come on, QuickTime, you worked five minutes ago. You're killing me here. Ah, OK. All right, so I'm going to have you hold the phone just so you can see what's going on with the jewel bot since I killed my tripod. OK, so I've already got some sketches ready to go. And so here's just a basic one that's going to um, turn on the LED lights in different colors. So. Um, in order to upload code to this, I'm going to plug it into uh, the USB here. And, okay. and then the thing you have to remember, and this is one of our debugging steps, is you have to put it in upload mode by holding down for two Mississippi. So we're going to go one Mississippi. Oh, I got to turn my JewelBot on first. That would be helpful. Good job, Jennifer. All right, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. And then it's going to light up this magenta color, and you know it is now in upload mode. So we can go ahead and we can put our code on it. And so I've got this sketch all ready to go. And so I'm going to go ahead and OK. Uh, we're going to do some live on stage debugging. So I'm getting an error here. So there are a couple things that I forgot to do to get my code on here. The first one is I have to make sure that I have my JewelBot selected. Um, so you pick it from your USB serial port. And then the next thing is I need to make sure that I am in the right board. So I was, actually, um, I was in factory firmware mode because I was resetting my JewelBots this morning. What I want to be for this one where I'm just doing basic colors is I want to be in solo coding mode. All right, so now I can upload this, and we'll be happy campers. Um, OK. Uh, while that code is uploading, um, these slides will be posted online. So here's some very basic sketches. Um, but want to kind of talk through those um, debugging steps. Is it in upload mode? Is the right por uh, port selected? Is the correct JewelBot board selected? Um, and when all else fails, what we can do is we can upload a blank sketch that'll kind of wipe out all the code on there. Um, and so these are helpful tricks for when uh, you guys are doing your own JewelBots coding. Um, all right. Did it buzz? Did you see it rainbow light? It rainbow lit? OK. All right. So yep, here we go. Can you guys see that? Oh, thank you. OK. Um, so I have this flashing all the different colors that we have available in our library. Oh, if I adjust my, yay, there we go. So here are all the different colors we're going through. So very easy to just upload a quick sketch um, and have different things going on. OK, cool. 
Uh, so let's do something crazy. Let's put a game on our Jewelbot. Um, so this is actually a game. Um, you can put it down for now. I don't know, have you pop it back up in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna put it back into upload mode. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. I've got my magenta lights. Um, so this is a game called Catch the Leprechaun that was actually built by one of the Jewelbot's community members, a young woman. Um, so it's going to basically flash different lights and then you have to press the magic button on the right uh, light color to um, get the rainbow lights. If you do it wrong, you're gonna get blinking red lights. Um, so when we look at this code, um, here's the function, uh, let me upload this real quick while I talk through this. Okay, um, so here's the function that we have going on. So we've got a Boolean that's being set if we're showing the rose color, because I decided I like the rose color and that's the one I care about to click on. Um, so if the color is rose, when I click the button, it's gonna buzz and then it's gonna flash a rainbow. So yeah, yeah, I know I won. But uh, if, I, if I click and it's not the, the rose color, it's gonna light up red and it's gonna let me know, um, you know, oh, you didn't get the right color. Uh, so again, did it go? Yeah. Oh, sweet, okay. You wanna play Catch the Leprechaun? <laughs> or press Catch the Rose? Okay. Um, do you wanna, <laughs> you, can, you can play the game huh? and you can hold the camera. Okay, so you've gotta press it when it lights up the rose color, which is that one for reference. Or you can press it on the wrong color and see what happens when you do it wrong. Oh, busted, red lights. Okay, um, so again, really easy way to kind of explain if else uh, statements and, and get girls uh, understanding what's going on. It's very tangible, very easy to see exactly what's happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, she's good at this game. Okay, uh, so we've gone through just a basic sketch. That's uh, kind of a game we can do. And then finally, if I can borrow one of your jewel bots uh, that you guys are wearing. Okay. And you can put that down for now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change uh, the, the code that runs. So right now, when they are cyan friends and they're paired, it's lit up cyan the whole time, but I'm gonna upload code that whenever they are in range of each other, it's gonna do an, a rainbow animation to say, hey, my friend is here, and then it's gonna turn on cyan for four seconds, and then it's gonna cycle through and do that. All right, so um, we're gonna upload the same way. All right, so one Mississippi, two Mississippi. All right, I'm now in upload mode. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna upload this sketch, but the thing I need to pay attention to is I need to make sure that I'm in the right board. Anytime we're gonna be doing friendship coding, which is where we're gonna be seeing our friends, we need to make sure we're in the friendship coding mode board. All right, so we'll go ahead and upload that. And I got an error message, serial port cannot be opened. I am plugged in, did I have my port selected? No, I did not, bad Jennifer. All right, here we go again. All right, so that's uploading. Um, so here are our basic debugging steps. Uh, wanted to give a quick shout out to Ellie Galloway. She's one of the uh, Jewelbots contributors. Uh, she's 11 or 12 now, maybe. Um, she does amazing live coding videos. She's actually part of the inspiration behind the new custom colors as she, in this video, teaches us how to do a rose color. And actually just gave her first conference talk at Red Hat doing live coding on stage for Jewelbots. So, Come on, that's, that's pretty badass, right? Uh, so be sure to check out her stuff. She's got awesome videos. <clears throat> so quickly want to run through before we get to questions. Um, and yes, this just uploaded. So if you guys want to see if that works properly, it might take a minute to sync up. Uh, let's talk about mentoring and how to be successful with Jewelbots. Um, keep your hands off the keyboard. This is huge. Is my function running? Yeah, you can use the, oh, I don't have the camera up right now. Yes, okay, so now it's cycling rainbow and then doing cyan. Oh, that one's just running through the, uh, the game. Jewel bots everywhere. Okay, um, so keep your hands off the keyboard. I know it's really like hard to when somebody like goes to google.com and then they type their search query in the Google bar and you're like, oh my God, no. But keep your hands off the keyboard. Teach kids keyboard commands, so they'll pick them up really quickly, but let them be the ones driving. They're gonna learn more that way. <clears throat> Let her make mistakes. This is a big part of the debugging, is getting her used to this process of figuring out what's going on, using her problem-solving skills, trying to figure out, okay, what does this error message mean? Like, why isn't this working? So don't just catch her before something happens. Let her make the mistake and then walk her through that process of how to figure it out. Um, don't give away answers, help her find it. That's the really cool thing about Jewelbots is they actually have documentation, and so, <clears throat> 
this is a really great tool uh, as developers reading documentation and understanding how to implement new technology is a huge part of what we do all the time. Um, so building the skill set, and it is a skill set, is huge. Um, so you can show her how to go through, kind of read the API, find out what's going on, and, and do any problem solving there. <coughs> okay. Uh, help create diagrams of her idea the way we saw um, the way the Joulebot LEDs are positioned. It can be really helpful to draw that out to kind of animate what you want to have happen. Um, and be patient. This is huge uh, because I feel like as developers, we're all about efficiency and we want speed and we want it to work and go, 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 go. But that's not how somebody learns. You need to give them time. You need to give them space to figure things out. Um, so definitely be patient. If you're looking to run a workshop for Joulebots, which is something we do, um, it's very feasible. The cool thing is you can bulk order, and the Joulebots team is really great to work with. Uh, so they're more than happy to you know, help you bulk order, assist you with any issues you might run into. So if you are looking to do a, a workshop, um, I would recommend doing it with no more than 10 to 15 girls for your first time, just for a little bit of chaos control. But these are some things that will really help. Uh, before the workshop, make sure that all the attendees know they do need to bring a laptop and that it can't be a Chromebook. They need to be able to download the Arduino ID. They need to have Wi-Fi and they need to have a USB port. If they're on one of those damn newfangled Macs, they need to bring their adapter to have a USB port. We had that happen at a workshop recently. Um, prep your mentors with guides and debugging tips. Kind of let them know what's going on if you're going to have mentors or people helping out and working in your program. Um, obviously, with Joulebots, it's helpful to figure out the timing like these ladies so brilliantly demonstrated that it, it takes a little practice to understand what's going on. Um, so prep your mentors as much as you can. Um, this is huge. Communicate the goals of the workshop. Again, as developers, we're, we know the end goal already. But for somebody new to programming, it's not as attainable. So with a workshop, you want to say, hey, we're going to explore Joulebots. We're going to figure out how to do this kind of code. Set an end goal for them in mind so they have something to focus on and figure out what's going on. And it's really going to help them have a better idea instead of just feeling like they're getting random instructions thrown at them. <clears throat> Um, be aware that installing the boards uh, will take some time, so you can have your attendees do that before the workshop, or you can have them doing during if they need more assistance, which is not uncommon to have happen. Um, be prepared for different learning speeds. This goes back to that psychological study with girls and boys. Um, we very uh, much make sure that we're coaching everybody, and we're saying it doesn't matter. Like, don't worry about what the person next to you is doing. You've learned at a pace that works for you. I remember we had two sisters one time at a workshop, and one just like really had an aptitude. She was blowing through the curriculum, and the other one bursts into tears because she feels like she's not doing as good as her sister. And so it's something to be really conscious about about the way women judge ourselves and, and the understanding we have there. Um, so everybody learns at different speeds. Be prepared for it um, and know that everybody's not going to be on the same page at the same time. Um, make sure you have a guide or curriculum strategy prepared, kind of again with that end goal in mind of what you want to have going on. Um, have follow-up resources ready. It's one thing to run a workshop that takes a lot of, of time and energy, but what happens when they love it, right? You want to make sure that they have a go-to resource and say, okay, what, what next? What can I do? Um, and so either know resources in your community or online forums or something like that to send them to. Um, and finally, expect some chaos. Again, as we demonstrated on stage, things don't always go perfectly according to plan, but that's part of the fun of it, so don't lose sight of that. <clears throat> Um, here are a couple resources. Uh, we didn't look at the community forums, but there is a great community online. Definitely refer girls to get engaged in that, um, interact with other women their age. Uh, there are STEM subscription boxes that are really cool. Little bits are another hardware piece um, that you can do a lot of coding for. Um, I'm not sure if girls who code clubs have expanded outside of the US, but you can obviously launch your own Coder Dojo, Kansas, or Coder Dojo chapter and do whatever you want. Um, all these links are to our website, so if you ever want to check out what we're doing or kind of copy what we're doing, that's totally cool. <clears throat> Any questions? <laughs> As I'm like three minutes over time, four minutes over time. Oh, are you moderating? <laughs> oh, and before we do questions, round of applause for my fabulous yeah. new friends. That's what I want to say. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> wow, amazing talk. Thank you. And there are already a lot of questions. Let's start with the first one. Why Joulebots just addressed to girls? Isn't it for, for really all kids? Uh, it's for all kids, but how many women have you seen walking around this conference in comparison to the men? Dudes, you've got everything already. Let us fucking have this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second question is also very interesting. So as a manager, what is the best way to support women as developers so they don't get pushed down by the still male-dominated industry? 
yeah. deaf society. Um, this is a fine line to walk because you don't want to white knight and be like, oh, oh, you poor little woman, you can't do this without mm -hmm. my support. But what you can do is you can amplify your voice. If you hear her getting mansplained or talk over in a meeting, be like, hey, I think, I think somebody else is trying to say something. Um, sponsoring is a big deal. As, um, if you've heard of mentoring versus sponsoring, mentoring is kind of coaching versus sponsoring is more in a company setting, putting her up for promotions or special projects or advocating for her. Um, especially with developers, uh, a lot of times I hear women complaining about just like getting put on maintenance or not getting to tackle like new technology or new things they want to work for. Um, and so advocating for a woman to make sure she's getting the, the opportunities to grow as a developer there. Um, and Sebastian is especially interested in if there are any additional designs. Yeah, um, so you can actually 3D print your own covers. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, you have to do a little bit of tweaking with the specs. Like my husband has a 3D printer, um, and when he can get it working, he's printed a couple different ones for me. Um, and then I've also obviously done my own custom straps, so you can okay. do these. I have a half-edited video that may go online at some point. It's been sitting on my computer for like four months. Um, <laughs> so I'll try and get that for you guys. That would be awesome, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and where can we get this tool bots? How, yep. how much do they cost and how? Yeah, how you do can we buy them online. Them? Um, a base unit is going to be 69 USD. Uh, the cool thing is they're running deals all the time. So keep an eye on the website. They might do 25% off. If you want a bulk order, you can get them for like 43 USD a unit, um, which is, I think, what we get for our workshops, um, which makes it a bit more accessible that way. OK. Then uh, thanks again for your awesome talk and all the live demos that we enjoyed a lot. Big round of applause for Jennifer. Thank you.